I bet seeing this computer is a familiar sight to many of you, taking you back to the days of collecting AOL CDs, that rush of excitement when you heard you've got mail, and logging into at least three different instant messaging clients to chat the night away with strangers. I remember when my parents brought home our first e-machines computer, it came in two giant boxes that had the tower and matching monitor. Being 11 at the time, I was in a world of wonder. Once it was finally hooked up, my mom decided to load greeting card software, but we didn't even own a printer. She just loved to make greeting cards that nobody would ever see. My turn finally came to use the PC and I connected to the internet, hearing the dial-up sound that we all know and love. I was finally connected to the internet, but I didn't know what to do. Where do you go on the internet? What even is the internet? I racked my 11-year-old brain. I finally realized where I should go on my first internet adventure. AOL keyword, Nick. The image of this computer has been burned into my brain for the last 20 years. I've never forgot that iconic, never obsolete sticker. How naive were they to make such a claim? Upgrade to the fastest computer every two years for 99 bucks? Did anyone ever even take them up on that offer? Probably not. If they did, I bet they would have gone out of business way faster than they did. Wait, are they even out of business? Hold on, let me check. Twenty thirteen. Yep. The sticker at the bottom proudly displayed the system specs, and seeing the computer every day, I quickly memorized the numbers. Though I didn't know what they meant, all I knew was that they were my numbers. Out of all the numbers to put on this sticker, why would they put the cash? Nobody buying this computer knows what that is. I recently got the idea to get a hold of one of these old e-machines and build it into something. I didn't know what I was going to build it into, but I figured if I just got a hold of the case, I could figure it out as I went. I jumped on eBay and looked around. There weren't many options, but I did come across a couple, uh, mostly ones that were overpriced or not the right uh, era that I wanted. I definitely needed one that had the stickers intact though. That was the absolute must of this, and it needed to be the same one I had when I was younger. Uh, eventually I found this specific one listed for way too much money, but it did have make an offer on it. So I decided to throw a lowball offer, which was still admittedly too much money for this case. And to my surprise, the guy accepted it. I paid and it showed up a couple days later. I'm sure the seller was happy to get rid of this thing. Who knows how long you've been holding on to it, waiting for some sucker to come by and spend way too much money on a computer that's essentially a piece of garbage. But those stickers, man, I paid a premium for them. When the case showed up, thankfully it was not beat up and in very good condition, aside from some random marks and scuffs. Uh, another thing to note, there was no weird smells, which was uh, quite the pleasant surprise. You never know what you're gonna get. If this came from some smoker's house, some old lady chain smoking or something, that would have been quite the deal breaker. But overall, just a little dirty. Needs a bit of touch up, magic eraser. Nothing too major though on it. And I think it'll come out pretty clean. All right, it's time to open her up and see what's inside. I've already removed the screws to the back and this whole panel comes off that covers all three sides, the, the both sides and the top. And time to reveal its inner beauty. All right, taking a look inside this case, it's pretty dirty, but it's not the worst I've dealt with by a long shot. Just needs a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of love, and it'll be all right. You can see all this ancient hardware inside of here. Everything in here will be gutted and removed, except for the drives, DVD drive and three and a half inch floppy, just to keep the aesthetic up front. One thing I did notice about this case, there is no cooling on it. No fans to pull hot air out other than the power supply, which I would rather not have be my only exhaust fan. So I will be looking into options of mounting a fan somehow, but keeping it the OEM look. I don't want to mutilate this case or uh, make it obvious that we've done anything to it. I do have a couple ideas, but we'll have to see what actually works once I get in there. All right, before we can do anything with this computer, we need to get it cleaned up. See if we can make it look like it did when it came out of the box 
Like I mentioned before, this case isn't in too bad a condition. It's just got some scuffs and dirt and there's some random tape on it. So it should be pretty easy to clean up. Um, two things we're gonna be using, just your regular cleaning wipes. And of course, the uh, Magic Eraser or Miracle Eraser if you're a cheapskate like me and don't buy the brand name. Need to take extra care around the, uh, the sticker. This surprisingly is not in too bad a condition considering the age of the computer. I'm definitely gonna make everyone sit through the full uncut version of this. Or maybe I'll release a director's cut after the initial video goes out. I hope I don't plan on using any of this audio because I sound stupid as hell right now. This and this are actual scratches in the paint, so there ain't no getting those out. This side, like the others, isn't too bad. Let's get us a new wipe. I don't even know if I'll need the magic eraser on this. All right, just a couple minutes with some cleaner and she's looking a lot better now. All right, before we take this thing apart, I wanna fire it up and see what is actually loaded on it. I don't know if there's gonna be Windows ME as indicated, but we'll see. Just slap on this ultra high resolution gaming display. All right, let's listen. Ooh. There we go. That's promising. That fan is ridiculous. Oh, there we go. So, sadly no Microsoft ME. Someone put Linux on this thing. Alright, that's enough of that. Glad we found out it works just in time to tear it apart. All right, now with that little experiment out of the way, let's tear into this thing and see what we can do with it. Just set that there. That nice eMachines logo in the background. All right, let's tear out the guts of this thing and see if we can't use any existing hardware I already have to save some money on this build. Uh, I guess we'll start over here, removing the PCI cards. Yeah, I only found one thread online with somebody talking about doing a build with one of these, and they mentioned a micro ATX board, but I don't know to what extent they modified the case to make it fit. I don't think that build ever got finished, so it wasn't a very good source of info. I don't even know if I'll use this audio. There we go. There's our Celeron chip with its bit silly string. Is that what they used? Is that my next video? Can you use silly string as thermal compound?
All right, we got most of that stuff out of the way. Let's take a look and see if it's gonna be possible to even put a motherboard in here or if I'm just gonna be wasting a lot of time. And this random case, it'll do. Hey, there we go. Look at that. Fits perfectly. So, that's out. Uh, I think my main thing I want to check is the power supply. But if I can make this work, then that'll save me, save me some money in the build. I'll have to buy some special power supply. No, it just might. There's another tab I didn't bend out of the way. It's like they didn't expect anyone to ever put a different power supply in this thing. They'd be so inconsiderate. Oh, oh I think. Oh, yeah. Look, if we get that last tab out of there, I think it'll work. Alright, this tab right here, it looks like that's the last thing that's blocking that power supply from sitting up flush in there, so get ready for some more riveting footage of me fighting with uh, a metal tab. Here we are, we cleaned it up a bit. Uh, lots of sharp edges, I feel like I got cut all over. But I am confident we can get this power supply to work in here. Those two nubs need to be removed and then it will fit, definitely. All right, we're gonna remove those nubs that I mentioned before that are blocking the power supply. These two little guys right here. see this is gonna fit right inside of there I just need to cut like a little C shape right here just something like that pretty simple look at that Okay, so to figure out where to drill the holes, I'm gonna try a little trick I've used before, not in this specific situation, but it's worked out. I'm gonna put some screws in here as uh, they can stick out. I'm gonna put a little bit of nail polish and touch it in the back, and then it should put uh, marks on. Um, this top hole right here it looks like it lines up perfectly with this rivet, so I'm not going to drill that one. I'll just do the three. I mean, three is good enough. This is also going to turn into a makeup tutorial channel after this. Alright. So I'm going to get this first try. Nope. Definitely not first try, but... You can kind of see in there. Something like that, you know. What's that thing? Cut first, and cut again, then keep cutting it. There we go. Yeah. 
there she is. 600 watt power supply installed in an old e-machines computer. This will be plenty powerful for the build I have in mind. In fact, it's going to be pretty overkill, but that's fine. I just had this power supply laying around. I don't have to spend any extra money on things I don't need to. And yeah, I think we're getting close. I've got parts ordered. I'll go over those in the next video discussing what we got, <clears throat> my reasoning, what I went with, why I went with I, what I did, and then we should be able to put this bad boy together and see, see what it can do.